Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Keller Williams Realty Technologies presentation of our Systems for Success series. Today we're talking about qualifying, organizing, and importing contacts. Top agents prepare for market shifts by ramping up their communications to their spheres. We want to show you how you can make your business shift proof by leveraging eEdge. And then in this session, we're going to show you how to qualify, organize, and import your contacts so that you can be ready to start marketing campaigns. All of our eEdge all of our eEdge modules work together in a single integrated efficiency increasing package, and they're all based on the millionaire real estate agents' models and systems. This lesson was created with the steps and the activities that can be found on the eEdge Database Quick Start Guide Workshop. The Quick Start Guide Workshop can be found on kwconnect.com. If uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the link and I'm going to send it to you all through the chat module. All right, there's the link in order to access. That is not the correct link. I beg your pardon. Let's do that again. I don't know what link I just sent you, but don't click on that link. Here we go. That's the link you all need right there. That's to the workshop. Now, I did mention that I was going to say something about our future CRM and an agent CRM or uh, your um, your. Your contact management side is also what it's known as. It's an important part of your KW platform and your strategy. Our current CRM partner is Market Leader, and KW recommends uh, its agents and its teams remain on the Market Leader CRM until we formally announce the release of our new agent platform targeted for 2017. However, remember that everything we're showing you as far as qualifying, organizing, and then the process of importing contacts is going to be the same regardless of what systems you're using, and we'll be sure we clarify that throughout today's presentation. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to once again explain the MREA lead generation model, help you understand what a database is, give you some tips on organizing your current database, creating groups, which is a very important part of uh, managing our database, and it's really important as a part of our importing, and we'll help you all understand that. And as always, please let us know what questions you have throughout today's presentation. So first, let's touch on the millionaire real estate lead generation model. So keeping the MREA models in mind, what groups do you want to set up for eEdge's systematic follow-up? Now, all the people in our contact database can be classified into one of two fundamental groups, and that's really your haven't mets and your mets. And I say in your contact database because your haven't mets are a, t a targeted group that you very well can add to your CRM. Now, these groups can then further be broken down into subgroups as illustrated in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent's Strategic Model for Generating Leads and Building Relationships. That's found on page 138. Uh, within Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Now, as the name implies, haven't met, as you can see there, are people that you have not met. And that's really everybody in the world, if you think about it. That includes the general public, as well as a target group that you would like to do business with. Now, in real estate, what do we call that target group? If there's a target group of haven't met that we want to put into our contacts, we want to bring them into METs, what do we call those? Uh, in the real estate terminology. I'll give you all just a minute to give me that answer. And Bonnie came right on track. Uh, you are correct, Bonnie. A farm or a sphere. It is exactly right. So your target group of have not met is your farm. So we want to do business with them. These are people that can provide us with new business. They may provide us with referral business if they're in our target group and they're receiving our branded marketing over time. So let's think about that. If we want to target a farm area, what is one of the, the what are the, some of the ways that we could market to that farm? What are some of the ways that we are currently marketing to a farm um, that uh, we uh, want to bring into our sphere? 
and Steve came in and Steve said that door knocking, so door knocking is exactly right. Uh, and, and another one uh, that has just come in um, said that passing flyers out, which is also true. So that's one way of targeting a group. We know who they are, we know that we want to bring them into our sphere, we don't have their contact information yet, they're not even a lead, uh, they're just a targeted group of, of haven't met. So we know that we can uh, create a single, a single marketing piece that speaks to everybody in that farm with a single message. Now once we've um, now let's, uh, let, now let's think of another group. Let's think about your circle. So I want you to think about uh, how that you'll be really surprised on the amount of people that you know within your sphere of influence. And in fact, most of us that got in, that got into business and in, in, in that when we first got into business, the very first people that were our um, potential clients that were our Mets were our immediate family or spouses and partners. So we, you want to think you want to think of the people closest to you as the inner circle um, of your sphere of influence. Um, Alice is asking why you all are muted. Uh, everyone is muted, Alice, because I have typically over 100 people on the webinar. It would be very difficult having everybody unmuted or um, unmuting people as they're asking questions. So please send your questions through uh, the same um, way that you just sent this question. The people in your, that are in your inner circle your, of your sphere of influence, we want to think of them as your biggest champions. They know you, they trust you, they respect you, therefore they're very uh, willing to help you. Because um, after all, people like to do business with those that they know, that they trust and respect. So it's only natural that your sphere is a place where you'll start to find leads. So your inner circle is a group of people that you'll look to most often. You'll reward most often, and you'll help them refer business. So if we look at our inner circle, we have our immediate family, our spouse or partner, friends, relatives, and neighbors. We could think of these individuals in these groups, and we could even further break out those groups because there are neighbors that we know very well, some we know maybe don't know as well and some we don't know at all. Same thing with our relatives. Some relatives were closer than others um, and so we could break those up. Uh, same thing with friends. We have high school friends, college friends, and then very close friends. So we want to think about those subgroups of these groups. Now let's think about the hidden circles. Uh, how many of you all could tell me what the hidden circles are? Now Hidden circles are typically found uh, in locations of of mets that of a, of a, there's a place of of mets that we know. We just haven't touched or spoken to these mets in a long time, and that place is called social media. So throughout social media, we have additional circles, additional groups that we could create additional groups that we can uh, uh, combine together and those hidden circles could be again high school friends, uh, ex coworkers. if we think about LinkedIn, LinkedIn is filled with our ex coworkers that may or may not be aware that we're in real estate. There are ex coworkers that we're very close to and in fact there are ex coworkers that would make excellent real estate agents. So we need to think about them in a bucket or in a in a in a group that is specifically for potential real estate agents. So if you think about it, all of the people that we know, we know in different categories, in different groups. That is even the closest people to us. And in fact, our have not mets are people that we do not know and we do not know them in groups as well, such as PTA members, um, there are uh, clubs and organizations you're a part of, and these are, are groups that you don't necessarily know everybody, but you do know of them. All right, please let me know uh, if uh, you have any questions. And Bonnie came in. She said, yeah, in, uh, by interest of you have HOAs, PTAs, um, the, the groups that, that she belongs to. So you're exactly right, Bonnie. These are groups that you belong to, and some people you know in that uh, group, some people you don't. So you have to further break down those groups. 
So let's talk about now what our database is, all right? So we know we have people on Facebook. We know we have people um, in, um, in our neighborhood. We know we have friends and relatives in our, uh, in our phone and in our Rolodex. What's a Rolodex, people are probably asking. Well, simply stated, a database is a collection of names and addresses, and they're all organized in a way that makes it easy and efficient to find the person's contact information, everything about them when you need it, right? So if you think about it, a stack of business cards is a database. A Rolodex is a database. And so is your list of contacts in your email system or in your mobile device, as is your list of social media connections. The bottom line is your database is the engine that drives your business. To use as an analogy, think about your car. If your car's engine stops working, your car stops working, you just simply don't go anywhere. So to prevent breakdowns, you need to keep the engine in good condition, you need to give it fuel, you need to follow a maintenance schedule. Well, just like that, your database needs to be kept in good condition so that you can keep your business moving forward. You gotta keep your database fueled with new leads and you need to follow a schedule to keep it current. So a database that runs your business is much more than a, just a list of contacts. Would you agree with that? It's a living record of all of your business relationships, your current business relationships, your potential business relationships, and then of course your past business relationship. It's also a tool to nurture and manage those relationships, to schedule and track every interaction that you have with each person in it. So when you keep in touch with your contact database frequently, just read MREA, that's one of Gary's uh, main lessons, uh, you'll find that by doing so you can get business in the way of repeat clients and referrals. Remember the best way of getting business. Okay, so we have our database in order. We, have, we know who we know. We know who we don't know. So now let's organize our database. So as we showed in that lead generation model, we know people in different ways. And I call them knowing them in buckets. So you have a family bucket. You have a close friends bucket. You have a coworkers bucket. And those buckets can actually be broken up into smaller buckets. Your next task is to look at your entire list of contacts and then determine what bucket do those contacts go into. If there's not a bucket for an individual, create one. Because chances are very good that you'll have another contact who goes in that new bucket. In fact, there are very few times, if ever, that you're going to have a contact that doesn't fall into one of your bucket categories. So breaking down your contacts into smaller groups or buckets, then uh, it will, will allow you to then save them into separate files. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to import them more easily into eEdge. It's going to allow us to send the personalized and relevant marketing information to each of those groups. That's going to speak directly to that group. First-time home buyers are going to be more interested in learning about what they should be looking for as they start the home buying process, whereas a group of sellers would be interested in ways to stage their home as they prepare to sell. You don't want to be sending a first-time home buyer's information on how to stage a home. It just doesn't make sense. So you could take full advantage of the automated marketing capabilities of eEdge, Break down your contact database so that you have contacts for each of the marketing programs in each of their separate files, and now it's going to make it so much easier to upload those contacts. So in this example, we've named each CSV file that corresponds with the bucket or the group that we placed them in. They're called groups in eEdge. Now it's going to help us determine what group we're going to assign it to when we import them. And now it's going to be really easy to sort and market to those specific t contact groups. So in this slideshow, I'm showing you some examples of how you might break out your groups by the type of contact they're in or the relationship that you have uh, for them. You can even name the touch campaigns you'll add them to. So um, Nancy's asking, what is the best practice for group names? Everybody's going to have their own group name. Um, 
uh, system, the way that they name them. I will tell you what not to do, Nancy. Do not create a METS and have not METS group, please, because that just means everybody that you know will go in one and everybody you don't know will go in the other. And that's not truly breaking down your groups into buckets. So you really have to think about it. You might work with a lot of first time home buyers, create a first time home buyers group. You may have a farm of people you haven't met. Definitely create a group for that. Absolutely need a past clients group. Now, you could also break that down into past clients buyers, past clients sellers. Now, in this example, we actually created a group for an open house. Well, what that looks like is when people walk into an open house, you have your KW Property Search app. You're going to ask them for their phone number so that you can text them their new app. Well, immediately now you can get their name, you've got their number, uh, get their email address, and then add them to your contact management system and add them to this group that you've already created right before the open house. Now, you can take anybody that's in this group and communicate to them anything that is happening with this open house or any future open houses. So I will ask you all this. If you have individuals coming to an open house and they are downloading your property search app, what types of clients would they potentially be? What type of campaign would we put them on in the very near future after we have added them to this group and imported them into eEdge? So while you all are at it, at answering that, I'll answer a couple of other questions. The first que another question is, can any one contact be in multiple buckets and groups? The answer to that, Denise, is absolutely yes. Any, con any one contact can be in multiple groups. And in fact, when you delete a group, for example, when we have 4783 Main Street Open House Group, and by the way, Nancy did answer that correctly. She said this group would most likely be buyers and perhaps first-time home buyers. Great. You are exactly right, Nancy. And once we have communicated to this group uh, through this open house and this open house sells and there's no other reason to keep this in this group, we would move them from the open house group maybe into the first time home buyers group or into an additional group and we could delete that group and give ourselves room for another group. When we delete that group, the people in it don't get deleted, the shell around it just goes away and they have the opportunity to be added to additional groups. Any questions so far? You guys are doing awesome. Tell me what you all think of the content and if we're on track and we're clear on our, um, on our lesson. All right, now we're going to create the contact groups in eEdge. The way that we do that is we visit mykw.kw.com. So now that we're on MyKW, we're going to use that drop-down menu. In fact, we could just click on View Contacts if we wanted to. Once we click on View Contacts, it's going to take us to this screen. This is eEdge My Contacts screen. If you're on the Dashboard, Listings, Create Marketing, or the Help menu, you can always get back here by clicking on Contacts. When you hit Contacts, and I beg your pardon, I don't have the drop-down menu shown there. You hit Contacts, you get the option uh, to Manage Groups. Here we have the ability to create the new group name. We're going to create the new group name. We're going to click Save. So you'll notice we have some groups already created here. We have a drop-down menu of Additional. We can edit the group. We can delete the group. And as I mentioned, the group won't go away. And you can actually see who is in this group. Okay. Now, once we have our groups created, we can import contacts into our database. So if we have not done any imports of our database at all, now's a great time to go through your current database, uh, download your spreadsheet, and look at different individuals and determine what groups they belong to. Okay, and the reason we want to do that is because we can import those contacts directly into our contact management system. So if you currently have your contacts in Outlook, Top Producer, or any other contact management system like Google Contacts or your mobile device, even Yahoo, 
you can import them into eEdge My Contacts. So as you can see in this diagram, you're, you'll first export your contacts from the current system into a comma-separated values file. It's basically a spreadsheet that you can view in Excel. Each contact management system will have its own unique instructions for exporting contacts, so look at your contact management system. Even Google will walk you through exactly how to export your contacts from Google into a CSV file. Now, once we have them exported, now we're ready to import them into eEdge. Once again, we're going to do that from mykw.kw.com, and we click, can click on View Contacts once again. And I may not have the drop-down menu, and I apologize. We're going to click on Contacts, and the drop-down menu will say Import Export. When you click Import Export, it will show up right here. And the step one, you have step two, and you have step three, literally three steps to import contacts. The first thing we're going to do is decide what kind of contact list do we have. Well, if we, if we exported them from Google, then we're going to use the basic contact list because we don't have a Google uh, form already created. Most of you are probably going to use the basic contact list. When you click on that, you're going to have the option to download the basic contact list uh, template, which is right here. When you click on that, you're actually going to be able to download the template, and it's going to show up as a little CSV file at the bottom of your computer in your downloads file. Once that's done, you can open up that file, and now we need to start filling in the fields. So if you take your current CSV file, and by the way, the, the required fields are first name, last name, email address, or physical address, or phone number. Those are the only required fem uh, uh, phone of the only required fields. Now, we could have any field in there filled in as long as it exists. We don't want to remove fields. We don't want to add fields. We can substitute fields. Um, if you look at the basic import template, I'm, I don't have an example here. Let's see if I do there. Nope. Um, it has like 70 to 80 fields in it. So you can always fill in a field such as comments and notes. You can copy those and paste them. But we want to be sure that we copy all of the first names, paste them in the first names. All the last names, paste them in the last names. All the email addresses, paste them in the email addresses. And in fact, on KW Connect, we have a video that will walk you through step by step the import process. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, okay, we selected the file type, and in this example, we're using Top Producer 8i. We can now select the status. Uh, we can select whether they're cold, hot, warm, and that's going to determine on when they're ready to buy or sell, if they're a buyer or seller, and here is where we can add them to a contact group. This is where it's going to save us a lot of time. So if you'll notice in the um, previous slide, we would only copy the email addresses, first names, last names of individuals within that group. Then we would import that group under Add Contacts to Group. Then we would choose the file that we saved in our hard drive, the CSV file that we saved in our hard drive. Agree that these contacts have uh, opted in. This is super important because this is telling everybody you did not buy this list. This was a list collected by you. Everybody that is on this list opted in by providing you their contact information in some capacity. It is imperative the first five rows of data. When I say first five rows, it really means the first six rows because the first row is your uh, header. So the next additional five rows. If you're not going to do more than five contacts in an import, just add them manually. It'll take you a lot less time. All right, no duplicate entries. You will get a note at the end that says you have uh, succeeded, which shows at the bottom of the screen here. When you get that, you know you're good to go. You might even get a failure. If you get a failure right here, it doesn't mean the whole thing died. It just means that maybe one or two weren't imported because they were already in the system. They're a duplicate entry. It won't do duplicates. So just look at the failed, uh, but you will see the um, successes as well. Now, 
your contacts have been divided into groups. You have those groups categorized. You have them qualified. And now you can start the process of adding them to your marketing plans. Next week, we're going to, or I'm sorry, in the next Systems for Success series, we're going to show you exactly how to do that, how to add your uh, groups to the marketing plans. If you want to go uh, through this process and do it from basically stem to stern, get your contacts in, get them marketed to, get yourself uh, started through eEdge, go through the eEdge database quick start guide workshop, talk to your office's trainer, talk to your office's ambassador because they have access to this quick start workshop where they can facilitate a workshop in your office and everybody can be on board and get ready to continue to market to their sphere. Remember that 33 touch, that's 8 by 8, that is what is going to turn uh, a potential uh, a visitor into a client. It is guaranteed, it is not guaranteed, it is proven, I should say, uh, to work. So we really have to do the work. And so in the next System for Success series, we'll be covering adding contacts to an automated touch campaigns, because we've already got them added to groups, and then creating an action plan to form new habits of working their database.